wrecking ball, Hammond, ball, hamster, rat. We all have many different names for him, but you'll know this character. I've made a few Baltuck videos, and I know there's people out there that make dozens of Baltuck videos, or have made those videos, but there isn't one video that people can go to to learn all of Hammond. If you want to learn Hammond and all of his texts, you have to go through dozens of these videos. So, I decided we are going to make an entire, from basics to advanced to basically useless and impossible text. Not just text, but when to play him, why to play him, what he does, what he doesn't do, what counters, maps, literally everything you can think of about Ball will be covered in this video. If you are already a Ball that knows the character, knows some things about him, I'll have timestamps in the description. You can see where the beginner's things start and stop, the advanced, and where the, the super useless cool things happen. The quad cannons is your primary fire. They do 5 damage, and with max fall off, 2.5 damage. And with a 25 shots per second, you do 125 DPS or 250 if you are hitting all headshots. But with this spread and fall off, you're not going to hit that perfectly. It has a 2 second reload, which is very long. It isn't your only source of damage, unlike Widowmaker or McCree. This is your damage that follows up off of your slams, which we'll talk about later, or to gain some ult charge before you engage. This ability, roll, is where the ball comes in in Wrecking Ball. It's nothing fancy, it doesn't do any damage or anything. You press your button and you to go from your gun hamster mode into your ball and you can roll around. This can be cast midair. You move faster. Normally on other characters, when you move backwards, you're moving slower than if moving forwards. But on ball, he moves the same in all directions. You will automatically roll downhill if you are not counteracting it. You move even faster going downhill, but going uphill, you stay at the same speed. Your head hitbox is hidden when in ball mode. Not all CC takes you out of ball. Getting hacked by Sombra, slept on a, pinned by Reinhardt, shattered by Reinhardt, Sigma Rock, and Hog Hook are the only things that will take you out of ball. Also, shooting left click your quad cannons automatically will take you back out of ball. You also automatically reload while in roll. It has the same reload speed, but you are in ball so you are faster with no head hitbox. So it's always a good habit to roll when you have to reload. Grappling Claw is Ball's ability that makes him so complex. This is where the tech and the advanced stuff starts. Pressing it automatically puts you in ball. You have a range of 23 meters. Your claws can grab walls and ceilings, not floors. As you get closer to your contact point, it will not retract back out. It will retract to a maximum of 6 meters. But it can start at 23 meters, so you start to roll up long, but as soon as you get close, you can't get long again. It's a 5 second cooldown. Once you pick up speed and hit above 15 meters per second, you go into stage we call Fireball. This is when you are able to hit the enemy players, which will knock them back, and do 50 damage. This Fireball will last 1.5 seconds if you are just holding W. Once your grapple attaches, you are then confined to that point of contact. You can spin around it, you can go left and right to like a pendulum. You can use it to gain height if you grab it higher up. Pile driver or the slam. This is what Ball's setup is for his team. It's an area of effect ability. You press your crouch button and it will only be used if you are in the air. So you most of the times you will use your grapple and swing upwards where you can then use this ability to slam straight down. If you land right on their head, it does 100 damage. It's an AoE, so it will go down to 20 damage on the edges of it. It has an 8 meter radius and a 10 second cooldown. When you hit the ground and do the damage, it also knocks them straight up above you. This then is the setup for your team. The enemies that are knocked up lose air control, which means they are locked into that straight up and straight down for 0.5 seconds, and they cannot strafe or use some movement keys. Slamming is always more consistent if you hold your button down, so try to get in the habit of holding it down instead of rapidly tapping it. This will come in handy for later techs. Adaptive Shield is his tanking ability. It is how he gains health points to be able to 
dive in, as he does, with his slams, and not instant die. It has a 15 second cooldown, but these shields last 7 seconds. When you press this, you get 100 HP, and you get another 100 HP per enemy near you. So with game, you face 6 enemies, and say they also have a bob out, that's 700 from them and the 100 base, 800 extra shield. And this adds onto your base health bar, so you could have 1400 total health. It has an area effect of 8 meters, which is the same as your slam. So whoever you slam, and is in the air, will also give you shields. It's also affected by barriers. If a Zarya bubbles or Orion shields, it breaks line of sight, and you won't get shield from anyone behind those barriers. This shield does not contribute to the enemy's ult charge. A lot of times, hogs or other tanks are just ult batteries and they feed them. They feed the enemy ult charge. But with Ball, you can go in, use your shields, take all that damage without feeding ult charge. Minefield, his ultimate ability. Upon activation, he spreads out 15 mines in an area. The mines have to hit the ground, they do not activate for another 1.5 seconds to turn on basically. Each mine has 50 health and lasts 20 seconds. Upon an enemy hitting a mine, it will deal 130 damage each. He can also still gain ult charge while the mines are active, just as Ash can with Bob. Activates mine while he's higher up in the air. They spread out more once they hit the ground. They also stick to the first surface they hit. So if you are in a tight room, they might stick to the walls or the roofs. I want to see how much damage you needed to get one alt. I turned the passive down, so obviously in game, you're gonna get it faster than with this number. Now these are the very basic, bare bones, easiest techs. Some of you may already have done them without realizing that it is a tech. This one we'll call ledge driver or ledge slam. You don't always have to grapple high to gain height to slam. You can jump off of a high ground, thus tricking the game into thinking that you are midair and then instantly slamming. If you didn't know, when you slam, you gain a little bit of height and you go forward in the direction you are facing. This allows you to fall off high ground but then still have height and distance to get back up. This one is another super simple one, it's literally just the speed cancel. Pressing shift or even left click to shoot instantly stops all your momentum. So when you are pushing someone off an edge, if you feel like you are also going to go off the edge, you can stop your speed. This one you have probably already done. The spin to win. You grapple something and you spin around it. This is really good for stalling on payloads, or just a lot of disruption in a fight on a point or payload. The vertical spin, the blender, it's pretty much just spin to win, except it's tighter. You have to grapple underneath a high ground, and do the same thing, you just spin your strafe keys, your W, A, S, D, and just turn with your ball spinning. This is really good for stopping dives, if it's a spot like this, or on other maps, block a choke. I made a video on this, I'll link it here. It goes into how to do it more in depth, and then I also show a bunch of spots how you can find your own spots, and the spots that I've found. The Toronto Kick is a way to get off a slam very quickly without having to swing in. You grapple something high, press your backwards movement key, and as, as soon as you get enough height, you slam. If you're holding the button down, like I said earlier, you'll get off instantly and it's just a way to slam very quickly. The basic combo for when you alt is to alt midair and then slam on top, and your slam will knock them up as your mines are activating. With Toronto Kick though, you can mines and then slam, making the mines activate while they are midair and have even less time to escape. Just like in other games, and with other characters in Overwatch like Lucio, you can B hop. It's when you jump as soon as you hit the ground to continue momentum. So with ball, you stay on fire for 1.5 seconds after you detach your grapple, and then as soon as it's ending, you jump, and then as you are landing and hitting the ground, you jump again and again, and as you can see in the speed comparisons, you will keep your speed up. I have my jump bound to scroll wheel down, which makes it a lot easier. I can just boom, hit it, and it will count like multiple times. Having on space, you just have to time it better. Wall jumping was one of the first techs discovered on ball. It is a pretty basic one in concept and pretty easy to get the basics of, but can then be expanded to much more difficult versions of it. 
So in this basic section, we're sticking to the basics, I'm going to cover the slanted walls that go inwards, uh, corner jumps, and objects, little signs. So to wall jump, you go into a wall, and at the same time of hitting it, you jump. This continues your momentum upwards. So on slanted walls, it is pretty easy because they slant inwards, they allow you to roll up easier. You go at the wall, you jump, and it will push you upwards, giving you enough height. You can then slam. If you're ever struggling to wall jump, I find looking at a little bit of an angle, looking not directly dead at it, not straight at it, but looking at an angle, makes it easier to get off the ground. Corner jumps are also probably even easier than slanted jumps. For some reason, hitting two points of contact, it likes you better, so you get more height. This is not only good for slamming, but these corners are really good for getting around the maps into flank spots, to high grounds. Having enough height to slam is also really good because it allows you to still have your grapple cooldown afterwards to either get out or boop them inwards afterwards. You don't have to waste your grapple to gain height. And the last one is objects. Same thing as corners. I don't know why, just the hitboxes are nice on it, so hitting them is really easy. You just hit it and you jump and it gives you enough height to slam. If you want a more in-depth video, I did one before, I'll link it right here. And these are the basic ones. This gets a little deeper and we'll talk about all walls and other versions of this a little bit later in the advanced section. Of all the basic techs, this would be the only one that I'd say would actually take time to learn. So just hop on a custom map and test out different walls and objects and spots and just get a feel for the timing of the jump. And eventually you'll be able to do it consistently if you practice enough. If you find yourself trying to wall jump to a high ground and then slamming onto that high ground to say get a snipe like a Hanzo, but you keep slamming going up past the height of the ledge but then not grabbing it, why does that happen? Well, because when you slam you go forward, you need to be able to go forward to land on that high ground. I climb up the wall, I slam, and it launches me backwards. Because I am already on the wall, so when my car when Ball is trying to go forward and up, he ends up just grinding the wall and getting pushed backwards. But, if you wall jump and while you are going upwards, press your opposite key, which is most likely S, to go backwards, you then give yourself enough room to slam and gain the height and distance to get on top of the ledge. Another trick you can do after wall jumping is slamming into a window. We talked about slamming onto high ground, which is obviously easy. But into a window, it gets a little harder because of how uh, tight that hole is. You have like a lot, you have to judge your height and your distance so that you know that you will make it into that window. This is kind of something you just get a feel for and you have to learn. But as I talked about earlier, you have to get lower to be able to go up and in. And it can be a little annoying, but it's a good skill that's very helpful against flankers or high ground DPS and just being able to harass them. It's a lot of people ask, what's a beginner tip? I'm new to the character, what's a beginner tip to ball? There's not really anything special, different, than the beginner tips for every other character. One, don't feed. Two, get value out of your cooldowns. And that's really it. The less you die, the more uptime you have. The more boops you get, the more slams you get, the more damage you're soaking in, the more tanking you're doing for your team, the more setup, the more damage, everything. You Less deaths, you get more of everything. More objective time. Your cooldowns, your slam, your grapple, your shields, all have big value. And if you mess them up, they have cooldowns. Your grapple, it's only 5 seconds, but if you mess up your grapple, you are then a vulnerable target because you can't escape very quickly and you can't get out. If you mess up your slam, it's a 10 second cooldown and there goes your big burst damage and setup. If you use your shields on a single one person, you don't have that for like 15 seconds. So next time you engage, if you don't have shields and you engage, you are dead. So a beginner tip I would say is make sure when you're engaged, if you're hard engaging into six people, have your shields. If you're engaging without your shields on a big team, you are probably dead. Also, if you are engaging with a slam, make sure your team can follow up. Because sure, you slammed them all. Guess what, you just did 100 damage to some of them, but uh, they all lived. You're not killing anybody because it's a 1v6. So you slam them, you did your damage, you got your ult charge, 
uh, and then you had to use your shields, and you fed them like maybe 200 damage, so you got it with 400 health. Well, guess what? You just got some ult charge for yourself, and you fed their supports a bunch of ult charge, and some of them damage ult charge. And you got cooldowns out, but guess what? It was too early, so now they're just going to reset and wait. And while they wait for their 6 second, 8 second cooldowns, you have to wait for a 15 second cooldown. So now they can just walk in, and you don't have your cooldowns back. And now you're useless. So make sure you get value on your cooldowns, and don't die. So earlier we talked about slanted walls, objects, and corners. These are easy wall jumps. Now, you can wall jump every wall, they're just harder. So the same concept, you run at them, you jump. They tend to be a little more annoying, you have to be a little better with timing and getting it right to actually get your height because of that 90 degree angle and the hitboxes are different. Same thing, you just practice and eventually you'll be consistent enough to be able to do it on every wall. And one last thing to assist you with these harder wall jumps is when you hit the wall and jump, press your opposite key, which is probably your backwards, your S, to then glide up easier. I don't know why, but I guess not pressing W straight into it and pressing that opposite key gives it a little of a lighter touch just to float up. You bored of wall jumps yet? Because there's still more versions. So the next one is the character jump. It's pretty much what you think it is. You can wall jump off an enemy player. It's easier off of tanks and bigger hitboxes, but can be done on the majority of the heroes. And obviously it's a little more inconsistent than walls because enemies move, walls don't. You can use this to minefield and then character jump off of them. So you don't have to minefield from high up, you can minefield close down, jump off them, slam, easy. The next one is super jump. It's the same thing as wall jump, but you do it while on fire. So you grapple in and you hit a wall jump. You can do the same this on every wall, just as you would a wall jump. It's just harder because the timing is different. Hitting signs and slants, just as they are on wall jumps, are really easy. And then regular walls would be pretty difficult. And finally, this would then transition into the last form of wall jump, bounce. It's the same as super jump except you try to get more distance than height. You hit an object while on fire and you launch yourself up but also far to get quickly to flanks or high grounds where an enemy sniper or the backline would be playing. So before I talked about how the grapple tracks to a minimum distance of 6 meters, it's not very long but it's just enough to get your speed back up and hit fireball before you get caught by the rope reaching its max length. So if you go into a wall and want to go back out in fireball, it's actually possible to do. We call this the rebound. It's just as I explained it. You go into the wall and then you either stay looking in the same direction, press S, go backwards, and you just have to learn your timing of as soon as when you get on fire, you let go of your grapple and you'll be able to go in fire. Or you can hit the wall quickly 180 and just keep holding W, never even let go of W. It's a little tricky to get the timing of that first, but it, once you practice, you can figure it out and learn pretty easily. And this doesn't have to be on a full 180 angle, it can be done on a 90 degree angle. Same concept, same rules. I find it a little easier on the 90 degree, because you don't fully switch your momentum. It's just a, a change of direction. There's two main uses for this tech. The first one would be to bounce them into your mines. Sometimes you minefield either too far ahead of them or too far behind them and to get them in, you can rebound. Or a really stylish one is to bait people off the side of the maps. Slam skipping is a way to get a slam off very quickly off of heights that don't normally give you enough height. Yeah, go up to a ledge and just treat it as a wall jump. When you wall jump the ledge and hold your slam button down, it will allow you to slam. It can be done on the tiniest of ledges and heights that normally would not be able to slam are now slammable. So for example, this one right here, if you jump off and try to slam, it's not high enough. You don't slam no matter what, but when you slam skip, it lets you. Now on other heights that are high enough to slam, you could jump on and then jump off to slam, but that takes two jumps and longer. If you slam skip, it's more quick and you can get your slam off and that little bit of timing does make a difference. The tightrope can be used in two ways. One, it can be used kind of like the Toronto kick to get a slam off the ground, or two, 
it can be used for mobility to cross gaps that you couldn't cross before. For the slamming one, all you need is a ledge that gives you a little bit of height. Planter boxes, tiny ledges, little objects on the map. If it gives you just a little bit extra height, you are then able to grapple something low to the ground, and as you jump and go into it, it pulls you upwards, giving you enough, enough height to slam. For mobility, you just go from one, you go from your side, grapple across, jump, and as the grapple's under you, it allows you to kind of float and it almost looks like you hover across the gap. It is also good for when causing gaps because instead of being on fire as you jump the gap, you then end the gap with fire. Double was a very well known tech of Wrecking Ball. Many people have seen this somewhere because they make for the best clips. So how do you do it? Well, the concept of double boop is normally when you boop someone, you go right through them, right? But with double boop, you uh, reset your fire before hitting them the second time. And when you go back on fire, it resets the cooldown of being able to boop. So you hit them once, you slow down by pressing S just enough, just to get under your 15 meters per second to be on fire, to be normal mode, and then you press it again, forward, W, to regain your speed and hit him again. That's the concept at least. You know, it's obviously a little more difficult with all the CCs and slows in the game, especially with May being a thing, but you just gotta learn the timing, practice it, and it's not that hard to learn and be able to do consistently. Most people use double boot for the environmental kills. But, I don't want you guys to forget, you don't have to put them off the map, but you just split them from the fight, doing 100 damage at the same time. You can then easily combo this into just your left click, your cannons, to finish them off. We talked about character jumps earlier. Now you can add a character jump onto the end of a double boop for a quick 200 burst damage. You double boop, jump off them, slam, boom, damage. Another way to reset your boop and be able to hit them a second time is when you ult. When you ult, it takes you out of fireball. But if you have your momentum and jump before or after your ult, you will regain your momentum and go back on fire. It then resets it and you can boop, minefield, second boop. This is really good because you can also leave your mines on a point before you boop someone even farther off. Or you can just use it as a desperate play to get your double boop clip. So now, you can combine the two, you can double boop mines to go for a triple boop. There's not much explaining, it's the same thing, you double boop and then do the minefield, you just put the two techs together, and you can pick a target and just mega displace them, take them out of the fight. Not only take them out of the fight, but also split them off with your mines. Drop boop is an easier way of double booping, because you don't ever have to let go of your forward key. When you drop from the high ground, you boop them. Upon hitting the ground, it resets that, and then you boop them again after you hit them, after hitting the ground. A little confusing, but literally just grapple, hit them before you hit the ground, and then afterwards you hit them again, and it's just easy. You can add a slam onto the end of this, going for a double boop slam, which would do 200 damage. Another weirder combo would be to cancel your boop with a slam, so as soon as you hit your first one on the head, as you're still midair, you slam, bursting 150 damage. After a drop boop, you can add on another reset, just how you would a double boop, which would then be kind of a triple boop. You hit them twice with the drop boop and then the reset a third time. To initiate a drop boop, you don't have to be super high up. You can get enough height to start it off of a wall jump, so you can wall jump drop boop. You can add a slam on to the end of this, still, for 200 damage. The hitbox bounce is more of a newly discovered tech, so maybe there's not actually videos out there about this yet. It is basically when you boop an enemy into a wall, and you go where they are also going. You then are both stuck against the wall, and the game registers you as in the same spot, so to make you know the game work, you guys aren't, can't be merged, it launches you upwards super fast, super high. It is more consistent on corners because there's less wiggle room for the enemy to slip away in a little direction so that you guys aren't in the same spot. It can be used for either mobility to get high ground insanely fast, hit, that, hit the skybox, or you can do it for a quick burst of damage with the 50 on the hit and the 100 on the slam. This can be done on all characters, just the bigger ones are easier and more consistent. 
I'm pretty sure it can be done on all flat straight walls. I haven't checked every wall, but for the most part, I've been able to do it on the majority of walls. It seems risky, because if you mess it up, you are left there without your grapple. But if you mess it up, you can still recover by just Toronto kicking and slamming off of it. Even if you don't get launched in the air, you still have a little bit of speed, so you can just quickly Toronto kick and be fine. Once you hit them into the wall, you get launched up. It counts as one hit. But sometimes, I haven't figured out why or how to do it consistently, but upon launching yourself upwards, you hit them a second time. I don't know how consistent it is, I don't know how to do it, I'm just saying that it's been done that you hit them twice. You can add a drop boop before you go for the hitbox bounce. This will make you hit them at least twice and then be able to slam for 200 damage. And if you get lucky, you can hit them with the, the three hits and then a slam for 250. The ground driver is done the exact same way you would do a hitbox bounce except you let go of your grapple and hold your slam button. With hitbox bounce, you hold your grapple and it allows you to fly upwards. This, when you let go of your grapple, you just get pushed under the hog or the enemy. And since you can't be launched upwards, it thinks you're up top and allows you to slam. I don't know. It's just weird. Pretty useless, I'd say. I don't know why you would ever grapple slam like this when you could just grapple swing and you know normal slam, but it's kind of nice and cool. Moving on from the advanced text, these ones are the situational only on certain maps. They're pretty easy to do, but I just put them in a separate section because they're not universal. Platform boost is something that can only be done on Volskaya. You can use the moving platforms to grab and they will pull you, but you get stuck behind a wall before, and this will then force you out and launch you. It can actually be used when attacking point B for a quick surprise attack on a backline support or... Just going for a big flank slam on their team. Slingshotting can only be done on Horizon Lunar Colony first point. It's a little wacky, but it's really good at stalling. Normally, people would spin around that one pillow at the back and just spin it around, but your movement becomes predictable. Slingshotting, you go from the high ground, grapple the tire, and try to run into it. When you hit your fireball on the tire, the tire launches randomly everywhere, while you are also grappled to it, which then also makes you flail around randomly with the tire. You can slam into certain spots and get yourself stuck. I only know of these two spots that I'm going to show, but I know that there's more out there and there's videos out there that will show these spots. But you can get stuck somewhere, wait for your cooldowns to reset, and then go in from the high ground. We talked about double booping earlier. Now, triple booping is the same concept. You reset your fire another time for the third boop. This is pretty hard to do because you need a max range grapple or to be very good at your slowing down and speeding up timings. It's also more difficult because it gives the enemy team more time to CC or slow you, making it harder or impossible to do. Now you can do more than triple booping. You can do quad, five, six, seven, depending on your angle. You can only do three on a straight, one straight grapple, but you can do more on corners if you bend around. I've seen seven be done, but it is unrealistic to be done in game. Even three or four is pretty impossible for in game. Strafe boop. It's one of the only techs that I actually haven't tried to learn yet, so all these clips come from other people or discords, I'll leave credits to them. The point of it is when booping someone, the second boops happen if you either reset your fire, which is the common double boop, if they use a movement ability, or you can wait out the, the cooldown. So strafe boop, you swing wide and curve back into them. This gives you enough time that they will time out before you hit them again. It's pretty hard to do. You can either do it short and just keep your speed just above 15 to barely be on fire and you'll have enough time. Or if you do the wide swing, you just curve away, curve back in. I can't really teach you how to do it because I can't do it myself. I'll link this video. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it is very inconsistent and not doable in a game. Pinballing. It's another one that I haven't learned yet. I've watched a single video on it and I found it too difficult to continually attempt. The concept is when they hit a wall, it resets. So you boop them into a wall while they are midair and you can hit them multiple times very quickly and basically just like deleting someone, steamrolling them. This is the one spot shown in the guy's video. I'll give him credit in the description 
but also probably really good if you can pull it off in those few scenarios, but not something that you can do all the time everywhere. I figure this is a good spot to put this part. Um, self promo. Hey, I stream. I'll be streaming right when this video comes out and I stream basically every day. Stop by, say hi, drop a follow, you know, vibe with me. What is your job as Ball? Ball is a weird tank. He can be played as a main tank or an off tank. When he first came out, everyone thought he'd play with Dive and would go with a D.Va or a Winston. With a D.Va, he's the main tank and he initiates the dives. If you're playing a poke comp with a Arissa, you're the off tank. Ball wants to do his own thing. He wants to play with tanks that don't need another tank. Arissa is the prime example. Sigma, kind of. He can then be in the back line, do his own thing, disrupting, setting up plays for his team, but he won't have, doesn't have to worry about them dying because of his lack of protection. He's the setup player. He wants to slam for setup. He wants to just annoy them and disrupt them and be a harassment as they try to get into position, but you keep booping them out of position or off their high ground and just harass and bully them. You might not kill their backline. Even if you don't get a pick, you're still making them use resources to either kill you or to live and not die to you. And as you get cooldowns out, then your team is better to initiate. There's different styles of ball. You have to adapt. You either play with your team and play off of your own setup, make your team play off of your slams, or you play solo, just be in the backline harassing and disrupting and getting picks on your own. The solo play is more of a, you play that in ladder, and once you get to uh, 3,700, like mid-masters, you probably can't do that anymore. You need to play with your team. You need your team to follow up off your displacement or your slams or your cooldown baiting. At core, there's three comps in the game of Overwatch, right? And comps are always based around tanks. So you have dive, you have brawl, and you have pick or poke comps. And poke pick is you play long range, you play for a halt hook, you play for picks with your Widowmaker, your McCree, your Torb, your, your snipers, right? You play long range, you play for picks, you play for kills, you don't commit to anything, you don't have a Lucio, you want to play long range, these kind of characters. Brawl, you want to get in their face, you want to do damage, you have to be close range, you want to speed at them, walk at them, swing at them, do damage, and kill them. And then dive, you're jumping past them, you're getting on top of them to kill them quickly. Now ball can be played with pick. To go with the hog, play the Arissa. You play off your halt, off of her halts, or you play off of his slams. You know, you, your uh, snipers or your DPS, your Zenyatta, your BAP is pretty good here. They go for damage off of those. And they go for kills off of that. And then off those kills, you can then, you know, be more aggressive. Ball can also be played with dive. You jump in, you do your slam, your whole team commits with you, and they zap or whatever, and you blow up a backline target real quick. And then you get those picks, and then, you know, you're highly mobile, you do your thing. Ball with brawl, not so good. You slam, your run starts swinging on that. You get big damage, big shields, your run's swinging. You boop them and displace them a lot, but it's not great, because your run can't really take the space without a Diva DM or a Zarya bubble. Your Brian's kind of now stuck without resources, and he needs those resources because he's a carry tank. He uses re takes resources to pop off. Brawl against Brawl is also not great because with Brawl comes the very fun Brig, May, Reaper, Lucio, Ana, all characters that are pretty annoying to you. They block your slams. They stun you, freeze you, do a lot of damage. You can't really displace a Reinhardt very easily. And if your team is playing, say, a Ballerissa into Brawl, you don't want to boop them into your team. They want to get close to you. You booping them into your team is actually, you're playing for them. Sure, you're doing the damage and messing them up, but you're helping them take the space. And once they're in Arissa's face, Arissa can't do anything. They just swing and kill her and kill her team. Arissa wants to play range. So you let them do their thing. You want to boop them away. You want to keep your distance. And not commit. It's rough. Try not to play ba ball into this. If you're playing dive against brawl, you jump past their front line and try to go for the Ana or something in the back. Or if they have a, uh, you know, a sniper or someone like this. It's still hard because they still have a May or a Brig. They still have a lot to counter you. But in theory, dive used to counter brawl. I don't know about anymore. If you can abuse high ground very well, when playing ball against dive, you more so counter dive. When they dive on you, you then slam them 
and mess them up and blow them up before they can do their damage to you. If you're engaging first and they're playing dive, you go in and they're just going to ignore you, jump past you, go onto your team and blow your team up unless you can, you know, solo the Ana. You kill their Ana, then their tanks will die pretty quickly to your DPS. First, I want to talk about the characters that synergize with him. What he wants if you're playing Wrecking Ball in a comp, what your comp should look like or what comps you play Wrecking Ball with. So start off Diva. She's great. Diva Ball. It forces Ball to be the main tank, and you have to be more of a team player. You play with your team, but this is what like Chengdu Hunters did in second season of Owl. You play Diva Ball, it's dive, but with other ones you have a ball, so you have more burst damage, less team sustain, and you just play for picks off of his slams, or you know Diva just goes in with you, and you can blow up targets really easily. Hog? Pretty poop. Hog and Ball Torture, it's a meme. Everyone knows how bad it is. It's like, you just have no tanking abilities. You have Ball's all self-tanking, and so is Hog. Your team is no protection, no shields, bubbles, no DM, so they die. Your team dies. Like, you can slam hook, kind of like a halt hook, but it's slam hook, and it's like, you can get picks off it. It's good if your team is bad. You can get picks and kills off with it, but it's not good for team fighting at all. Reinhardt ball, uh, it's good for the ball, but bad for the Reinhardt. With Reinhardt ball, Reinhardt's a carry tank. He needs resources to pop off. That's why he's always played with Azaria. He gets Azaria Bubble, he gets Diva DM, he gets Arisa Shield, or he gets Sigma Barrier, Sigma Suck. Like, he gets a lot of resources into him. On a nade, on a healing, you know, Lucio Speed. Pocket the Reinhardt, he brawls and wins. And that's how the meta kind of is re right now, is Pocket the Reinhardt, he swings and goes. But with Ball, don't help him at all. With Ryan, you want to play Brawl, but Ball does not do well with Brawl. Winston, also pretty good. It's, I don't know, here or there. It's, you play Dive. Go Diva, you go Winston Diva, or Winston Ball. I think Ball's, Ball's the first initiator there. Like, normally it'd be Winston Diva, Winston jumps in, then Diva DMs him. But Ball goes in, gets his slam, and then Winston jumps in after that. He presses E, gets his 500 extra shields. Winston's with their lasering, so you have the slam and the laser beam, and they just get melted and deleted with a coordinated dive. If you have a Genji dash with you, like, it's really good. It's just dive. Dive gets hard counted by May and Reaper and a lot of McCree, like Brig. A lot of good characters count dive right now, but the concept of dive, of their coordination is really good. Orissa. I fucking love Orissa Ball. Back when Double Shield was meta, when it was Orissa Sigma, uh, Orissa Ball was goated. You know, Ball could, Ball could do his own thing. He would... You know, go in the back line, do his boops, get his slams, do his own thing, just roll around, and not have to worry about his team, because he had Orissa with her 900 HP shield that she was just spamming on cooldown. She could self, she could solo tank, basically, so Ball could be a tracer, fat tracer in the back line. So Orissa would take care, and if you comboed Halt, Alt, and his Halt, Alt, or Halt slams, you just had big setup. And you Halt, you slam, and then your team... Uh, collapses on that. Oh, it was so good. Now with the rest of 600 HP shield, it's a little harder to solo tank with her, but it's doable. Wrecking Ball Zarya, probably just as bad as Hog. You have a little more protection because you have bubbles, but Ball has to be in the main tank there because Zarya can't main tank. But then you have a few bubbles. The bubble's nice on Ball when he goes in, but your team has nothing. And your team just, they can, if they ignore the ball and just walk at your front line, you just die. Uh, and Sigma, I don't know why he's not on it here, but Sigma, boom, put him there. Uh, I think he's like up here with A. He kind of plays like an Orisa. He can solo tank with his suck and his shield and protect his team while, well while Ball does his own thing. You just have to play safe and smart. Okay, supports now. Bap's not on here again. I guess this is outdated, but whatever. Uh, Ana. Insane. You cannot go Ball without an Ana. Ana is key with dive, right? She has... She's like one of the only ranged healers in the game. You can be across the map, but if you can peek your Ana and she can heal you, you're set. She can heal you across the map. You can, she can nade off your slams. So you can slam, and then they get slammed above their shield, and they get naded. Antis everyone. Nanos are nice. She's got big healing. She's just great for with ball. Mercy? I mean, not terrible. She can fly to you, heal you, and then fly back. A little risky sometimes. But if you're just playing like a backline harasser, she can help, but not great. I'll still put her here. Moira, poop. Moira ball is terrible because ball has to come all the way back to her. She uses half her resource on it, and then you can finally go back out. Terrible. What's the point? Lucio, I'd put him here, but honestly, I'll put him there. He's good with dive, so you have to put him there. But I hate getting sped. When you're speed boosted, it just throws you off because you expect to go in a certain direction and then you fly even farther. If you get speed boosts, you can't double boop because you just don't know your timing anymore. Uh, and his healing is close range and if you're playing the back line. Unless he's diving with you, right? It's just annoying. Zen's just straight up bad right now, but at least he's got range healing. So he can like throw an orb on you 
which is nice, and, and he's just bad, but getting healing from him is nice if he orbs you before you go in. Same with Brig. She can armor pack you before you go in, or you can get a tick of her, a proc of her passive, whatever, her passive healing, get a tick of her passive healing, get an armor pack, go in, have that extra health, and then boom, boom, do your thing. She can feed you armor packs, but she doesn't heal. She's not a tank healer with armor packs. Armor packs are for squishies. She's a brawl healer. Same with Lucio and Moira. Uh, and Bap, I'd put him like here. Because he can heal from distance. If you're playing and you're not moving and he can just shoot you some nades real quick across the map and then you can go back in. I had recorded a whole part of this for the DPS the same way I did with everything else. But honestly, DPS don't change how they play with the ball. Dive is good with ball, but so is long range that can shoot on it and follow up. All of them are pretty decent. The only ones I would say is bad is Bastion because ball does not protect him at all. And Sim, Junk, May are projectiles that are hard to get their follow-up. Alright, now we'll do counters. When do you not want to play ball? Against what enemy comps is ball bad? If the enemy is also running ball, you're fine. Ball v ball. You dive, they dive. Do your own thing. It's fine. You can still play ball against enemy ball. You can still play ball against a Winston. I guess we'll rank them like who shits on other other ball. So like yeah, they don't counter. An Orisa can be annoying, but you also can be annoying to her, right? You displace her, you make her go in front of her shield, go away from her shield, but she can also pull you, which messes up your momentum, so you lose your speed. She can also gold, which messes up your slam, which can be annoying. It's kind of like an even even you're annoying to her, but she's annoying to you. Hog, honestly, Hog kind of counters ball. He can hook you and do a lot of damage close range with his shotguns and his ult just makes you be useless for the entire ult so uh, that's not fun Zarya, same as I said, you're annoying to her but she's got bubbles which can block and be annoying Reinhardt, honestly Rein kind of counters ball pretty hard he's unboopable, actually he was recently less boopable so he's, or they nerfed his boop of unboopability so he's more boopable so he's better now, but he just puts up his shield and blocks your slam so your the team doesn't get slammed, so you have to shield, you have to slam behind him. But then you can still 1A, so he's like never slammed, if he's good. He's harder to boop, so he's a pretty good counter, especially if they're running Brawl. Ball does bad with Brawl and against Brawl. Diva, honestly same as Hog, maybe even worse. She's got shotgun, she does a lot of damage to Ball because she hits every single pellet. And she's just as, I mean, it's four second boosters now, so it's not as bad. But three second boosters, she could just keep up with you. She'd just chase you and chase you. And if she wants to, like, she'll just hunt you down, focus you, and kill you. Uh, and then a Sigma, same thing as Orisa. Annoying, because he can block your, with a shield and can rock you, which messes you up. But also, you can displace him really easily. This is why I really like Ball with double into double shield. You just displace their double shield so much that they... They have their shields up, their bunker up, and then you just displace them and ruin their bunker and bat. Uh, an enemy Lucio. Annoying, but also killable. He can just boop you and amp heal or heal himself. So when you slam him, he'll just boop you away. Don't He can't go for predictable slams. Or he'll just boop you. His healing's kind of annoying, especially if you slam an entire team and he just amp heals, it kind of negates it. But he is killable if you slam and solo him. Moira... Annoying. You can't ever kill her, you know, because she's got fade every five seconds. You go on her, she fades away. If you bait fade and then go on her, maybe you'll kill her, but her, she's just healing orbs and self heals, which is annoying. Brig. <sighs> Fuck Brig, man. Bash, whip, armor, healing. She fucks on you. She counters ball hard. Every time you go and you get bashed, or she can whip you away like a Lucio, whip your away. <laughs> mess up your momentum as you're going in with either ability has armor so you do less damage on your left click and it gives armor to less damage on your left click and AoE healing uh, just run away man Ana, you go on an Ana if she doesn't have cooldowns if an Ana has sleep, you're slept because you're a big hitbox and if she misses it, she's bad uh, she antes you, which is whatever because you still have your self shield but she's got the self healing and will sleep you but if you go on her when she has no cooldowns pretty good Zen, 
Freelo. He can be annoying if you're playing at range. He'll discord you, and like before you even engage, their soldier or McCree or Widow or Hanzo is going to do a lot of damage to you before you even get in. But he has no self peel, no self healing. You go on him, he's dead. You just, he's a free kill. Mercy, kind of like Moira, probably even worse than Moira. Maybe here. You go on her, she flies away. You chase her, she flies away. You chase her, she flies away again. She just flies away. She's not going to do anything to you, but she'll waste your time for a while. Even if you slam her, she just flies away. Like, she's annoying, but doesn't do much to you. Oh, and Bap. Going on a Bap, he does a lot of damage. He has self-healing, he has immortality. With him, you kind of want to soft engage on him. You go on him, you slam him, you shoot him, you get him low. This then forces him to either shift his self-healing or immortality, and those are long cooldowns. You just got those big cooldowns out of him, and now you can go on him again in another 10 seconds and you slam him again, and he should die, just like a zen. Even if you don't kill him, those big impactful cooldowns are gone. DPS that counter you, Farah. She's annoying. She can boop you, she can just do a lot of damage, but you can... You're like the second tank that can actually do damage to her. Diva being the main tank to do damage to Farah. Hammond being hit scan can do damage to her and annoy her and harass her. But ultimately, you're not gonna end up killing her. She's just gonna poke you down as you poke her down. So I guess not terrible. Not a hard counter. It's kind of just a neutral matchup. Reaper. People think Reaper counters big tanks. He does. He counters Winston. He melts Hog if Hog doesn't one-shot him, right? But he doesn't actually counter ball. He makes the ball play differently. Uh, you see a Reaper, you don't, you know, slam him and just try to 1v1 him point blank. You just play more range, and he gets a shot or two off you, and then you're faster than him and you run away. As you're running away, you know, he does zero damage to you. So maybe he'll get a shot or two off, which can be chunky. But for the most part, he doesn't, like, you're faster than him. He doesn't actually do that much damage to you because you are fast, and you just play slightly at distance, unlike Winston, who has to play right in his face. Sombra, terrible. She hacks you, you're useless. All you can do is gun, your head box is visible, can't shield, can't roll, can't boop, can't slam, you're useless. She farms you, she gets EMP off you very quickly. Have fun with that. Genji, uh, he can just escape you with wall climb or dash, and he can farm you with, he can honestly, he can farm good ult charge off of you, but he doesn't really, he's not a threat to you. He might be a little, you know, double jumpy jukey around, so it might be hard for you to shoot him. But for the most part, you'll kill him. Even if he deflux, you should kill him before he kills you, unless he's got big support from his team. Doomfist annoying. Punch. He got three things that stops your momentum. Punch, slam, uppercut. All of them stop your momentum, all of them knock you up and mess you up. If he uppercuts you, uppercutting you is nice, because then it gives you a free slam. But for the most part, he's an annoyance. Widow. So she's not actually annoying to you. And then you go on her and kill her, she grapples away. Then you just go on her again and chase her. Kill her. She has no uh, CC to stop you. Hanzo, same as Widow, probably even worse actually, he can always wall climb. He can do a lot more burst damage with his storm arrows, and more consistent damage, even if you don't have a head hitbox, and he's got consistent mobility with his leap, but killable. Tracer, honestly kind of annoying, she farms you. She farms ult charge off you, but you know, she farms pulse bomb off you, she, stick, she sticks one of your squishies, kills your squishies, because you fed her. She can keep up with you pretty well, she can dodge... If she's got good blink usage, she'll just keep dodging your shots, or your slam, or your boop. So you're probably not killing her. You can do good left kick damage to her, but you're not going to get ability damage on her, and she's going to farm all charge off you. May, we don't... Do I have to explain it? It's May. She holds left click, you're useless. Smile. McCree farms you from long range. You get close to him, you flashbang, fan the hammer, roll, fan the hammer. Like, he does a lot of damage to you, no matter where you are on the map. You get in his face... Unless he doesn't have cooldowns, which he probably does, though, he's gonna kill you. Sim, free low. Dude, like, she's got nothing. What's she gonna do to you? Charging her beam off you, but you kill her before then. Ash, same as Hanzo. Good long range damage. She get close, she'll dynamite, shotgun away, but is killable. Soldier, same as Ash. Mobility, that's annoying. Self healing, you can juke forever. He'll do good damage to you, but it's a neutral trade. He'll kill him. He kills you, either one. Torb. Torb is annoying, because it's turret. If he's got his turret up and you're trying to duel him, He's got shotgun that goes bang 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 in your face real quick. You slam him, he presses E, and he gets so much health that you're not killing him. And he farms you a long range. Plus his turret, you can't really break a turret from long range very easily. It takes a long time because you have fall off damage. But, yeah, you don't kill him without help from your team. You kill him. Bastion, uh, I'd probably put him up there. He farms you. 
you go you can't slam him you can't displace him he'll just shoot you as you're shooting him and he out yeah, tps's you by a lot this is a hot take but i think junk is actually really good at countering ball the interaction when you slam a trap is very wonky sometimes your slam will break the trap other times the trap will stop your slam and you'll get trapped but you get trapped and then you're just sitting there useless and he does a lot of spam damage if he if you go on him to slam he'll just fly away or throw a mine down and boop you and himself and does a lot of burst damage he might not kill you if you get trapped you're dead but he might not kill you you might not kill him either though i'll put him there next would be maps what maps is ball good on is he bad on blizzard world nothing special about it attacking first point might be difficult as your team struggles to take space if you're running dive it might not be terrible uh, second point's pretty good because you have the high ground that you can go on and slam off of third point probably more difficult not terrible not great you know it's just whatever buzon i love buzon Buzon downtown is great, They're, that point is amazing because you can come from the high ground slam, you can double boop very easily off the map. Buzon mecha base, same thing, slam from high ground, double boop off the map. Normally first fight takes place on high ground, you can actually just go and boop them off. So your team then fights that 4v6 as you boop 2 off the high ground. And Buzon Sanctuary is probably the worst of them all, but still good as you can hide and flank very easily, get big slams off, it's great. Dorado, uh, attacking first, you can go around and boop them off, but if they expect it, it's not good. Uh, but you can still come from high ground and get a big slam, just your team struggles to get through that first choke. Second point, pretty good for ball, high ground, big slams. Third point, same thing, not terrible. And then on defense, you want to hold the first bridge choke, and with ball, you can't really hold that choke very easily. You can't just want to play spam or brawl, but doable. Eichenwald, pretty good. Your team struggle might struggle to get through first, but second point is amazing for ball with the high ground and the boops. Third point, pretty bad. Like, that's where you might actually get off ball and go to brawl. So I'll put it here, actually. Hanamura, attacking, you're fine. Like, you get big slams, you get big disruption, but your team struggles to get through choke if you're not playing, you know, a good off tank to help you Reinhardt. Or a second shield to help your Arisa. So they might struggle to get through, but if you can do a lot of disruption and a lot of damage in the back, and they direct their attention to you, your team can then get through pretty easily. Second point, you can boop them off their high ground if you're attacking, boop them off, harass them, but it's kind of hard to get around. And then defense, pretty bad. You want to play spam so they can't get through choke. You can get slams and your team plays off those slams. It's not great, but you know, I, I, I still play it. Hollywood, pretty good. Not too bad. Nothing special. First point, you go through and slam them. Second point, a lot of high ground to abuse. Third point, pretty good flanks so you can poop and disrupt. Defense, more difficult, but you know, not as bad as Hanamura. Horizon, oh my, Horizon's a terrible map, but ball is actually viable and played on that map. Uh, if you're defending, depending on what they're running, if they're running a sim, tip TP just right down the mid, you can either slam them before they TP, or you can camp on point and just instantly boop them out so they don't get to point and then slam you can if they're running dive you can do the vertical spin and stop their dive if they're playing brawl you can slam on them and they have a lot of distance to cover so you can just kill them before they even get to point and then second point same thing you can bully the ana that plays top left or the snipers you can engage and slam very easily and then on attack it's dive or you go to point and then boot them off high ground and it's good it's good time ilios ball is very good on king of, or king of the hills the majority of them so ilios well he gets insane value out of boops ilios lighthouse also boops and high ground ilios ruins some boops you can just jump on a point and slam he's good on all of those junker town nothing special first point might be rough because it's a lot of long range long no flanks long long spaces they can see you but you can bully the widows and the snipers and the long range people it might be long range for them but you can bully their long range second point's great for him third point's great for him i'm actually gonna put it up here king's row yikes if you think about it it's not bad there's good high grounds good boops not terrible but everyone plays brawl and ball does bad against ryan zarya or he does bad with the Rhine because he can't pocket the Rhine. He doesn't help the Rhine very much. But playable, doable. Lee Jen, King of the Hill. You get boops on Night Market. You get boops on Garden. You spin on Garden forever. There's a really quick rollout from, for Night Market. Uh, the inside one, Control Center, not great. A lot of people play Brawl, but if you're not playing Brawl, it's actually not terrible. Nepal, good again. I'd say Village is a little rough because the point is you know underneath or whatever. It's more of a bunker point. 
you can't really slam into there. But if you have point control and they're pushing into you, it's not terrible. But then the the one with the pit is good for boops and ball. But the one shrine is good because you can spin around that and do your thing. Numbani, same thing. It's a it's a dive map, dude. Dive is ball is good with dive, except for third point. First and second point, great for ball. Third point, you might have to switch. Oasis, uh, he's great on all. University on the inside with the hole, he can slam and spin, and vertical spin to stop the choke. Gardens, there's high ground, and a point to spin, and boops, and city center, high ground, dive, he's good, he's good. Paris, uh, I haven't played in a while because it's been on rotation, but I say it's not bad. You can easily slam or boop them off the high ground on first point, second point, you uh, play ball, it's, yeah, it's not bad. Not bad, that's all I'm going to say. I haven't played in a while, so I can't really say much. But I'm pretty sure it's good. Rialto, mm, nothing special. Third point's difficult because there's not good flanks. First point, you can get a boop off the bridge. Second point, you can get a boop in the river. First and second are bad. That's all I'm going to say. Route 66, not terrible. You can boop him off high ground. You can slam them. You can do your flanking routes. You can disrupt. There's high ground to abuse. Not terrible. Nothing special. Temple attack is good on both points. But defense is rough. First point, you can slam or whatever. You just, your team has to be very aggressive if you're playing him on defense. Volskaya, I'd say he's boop. You can't do much on attack. You can get in and then you slam or boop. You have to get in without letting them know so they can then disrupt or annoy them or harass their back line. Second point, you can do a double boop off the map. But it's hard for your team to get to point with a ball. And then on defense, meh. He's just meh. Uh... Gibraltar's a dive map, so maybe he's up here actually. Dive the high ground, boop them off high ground on first and second point. Third point, still a high, you might have to switch, but you could still abuse that one high, two high grounds. If you might, yeah, you might have to switch, so I'll put them here. And that's the maps. King of the Hills, great. Horizon Lunar Connolly, pretty good. Other King of the Hills, but there's like two maps, there's one map in these King of the Hills that you might have to switch, so I moved them here. New Bonnie's a dive map, so is Gibraltar except for third point. I can vault good except for third point. Route 66, just great. He's just, he's pretty good. Junker Town, except for third, except for first point is the worst, except he's bully snipers. And these are just nothing fancy. Yeah, there's not many terrible maps for him, except for two CP defenses and brawl maps. But dive maps and heavy attacks are good.